Get out of my way! Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is part two of my sneaker collection. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link it below so you guys can watch it after this video. But to be real, I think part two is where the money is at. So I'm going to be talking about my Yeezy collection, Adidas, and all the other luxury brands. And <sighs> looking at all my sneakers, like I pulled out all my sneakers this morning so I could talk about them in this video. And looking at all of them, it made me realize why my bank account looks so sad. <laughs> but anyway, before we jump into the video, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I upload every Wednesdays and Sundays so you guys don't want to miss out. And let's just start talking about these sneakers because I feel like it's going to be a long ass video. <laughs> We're gonna start with my Yeezy collection and we're gonna go by chronological order so from the very first pair that I ever got and they're a pair of 350 pair of blacks I'm gonna try and find you the, the OG OG box Oh my god no! Hold on I didn't even bring it out here give me a sec I need to grab it So I actually didn't even pull out this box because I totally forgot that the very OG Yeezy 350 boxes doesn't have anything like no boot This is so dusty Oh my Ugh. The really OG 350 box actually doesn't come with any kind of print on the side or on the top of the box. The only part that says Yeezy is on this side of the box and then on the opposite side you see the sticker. Fuck. This does! So this was the very first release of the Pirate Blacks in... When did they first come out? 2016, I want to say. I know they did two drops, but this was the first drop. These are my very first pair of Yeezys that I got, and I actually lined up for them at the Up There store. So I was so determined to get this pair, because prior to this, there was the Turtle Dove release, and I didn't get a pair, so when this came around, I'm like, I need to get myself a pair. So I literally went and bought a camping chair and camped out by myself at Up There store. And luckily I managed to get the last pair in the store. So this one I got in a size US 6 and as you guys can see, I have worn this a lot. It's pretty beat up and on this side here, there's even a hole, okay? Can you guys see my finger through this? The suede on the side has turned green. I've got a lot of wear out of them. I don't wear them as much anymore because I'm afraid they're gonna fall apart. And to be honest, I don't really wear my 350s that often. I'm a little bit over the 350s in general and that's why I don't wear them as much. Moving on, the next pair I got was actually a pair of 750s. And the box looks like this. Man, I haven't even looked at all my sneakers in such a long time that Sometimes I forget that I own these shoes, but yeah, this one I won a raffle at Adidas. I feel like the key to winning a raffle is when you feel like you're not gonna win, like you're just gonna like, uh, I'm not gonna get it for sure, let's just try it anyway. And that was the attitude I went into entering this raffle. And then I got the text saying I won, so they're the chocolate colorway. And this one, I got it in a size six and a half. They fit really well. These are pretty new because I, didn't wear them that much. I don't think they really suit me, but at that time, I was like really huge on the Yeezy wave. Every single release, I just wanted every single one. Like I would enter every raffles, I would be so hyped for it. Because they started releasing so many V2s, like the, the hype died for me. During this time when these released, like I was... I was hyped, okay. So I was really happy when I won these. I think the retail on this were 550 Australian dollars. And then these ones, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they were 280? Wait, I think the price tag is on the box. Ugh, damn! So the retail on the Parrot Blacks were 260 Australian dollars, which is insane. So right after that, I got into the V2 wave and I actually got three pairs. The first pair I got were the black and red ones. I actually own the red ones as well, but I'm not sure where they went. They're somewhere. Um, all of these I got in a size 7 because I feel like they run really small for me. They're pretty snug in the toe box. I definitely recommend going a size up for the V2s. So I also got the Beluga 2.0s and the Zebras. And I heard they will be re-releasing the Zebras at the end of the year. So if you guys missed out, um, yeah, probably you can cop yourself a pair at the end of the year. And like I said, I really don't wear these anymore. I'm pretty much over this whole V2 350s. I'm looking forward to V3s because it's rumored to release beginning of next year. I'm curious to see what it looks like because again, they've come up with so many colorways. I think the sesame one is next. To me, they all kind of just seem the same and it's kind of overdone. But if you like the silhouette, then definitely go for it. They are really comfortable pair of shoes and yeah, I would highly recommend getting 
getting yourself a pair if you don't already own a pair of Yeezys. So the next ones I got is the 500s in the blush. This one, my boyfriend actually got them for me through StockX and he paid resale for them before they did the drop at Adidas. They had a small release in the US at a like a NBA All-Star Weekend event or something. So there were a few pairs floating around. So he copped it on StockX for me and at that time he paid 700 plus USD which is pretty steep. I really like the 500s, they're really comfortable and I find that these you can go maybe half a size up from your regular size so I got this in a size 7 and they are slightly too big so I reckon if I went six and a half, this would have been perfect but I'm a huge fan of the 500s. The sole is surprisingly comfortable even though they don't have the boost technology, they have the adiprin sole and I really love these and the blush colorway is my favorite out of the three that they've dropped so far. The most recent addition to my collection is the 700 Wave Runner. Got these on adidas.com and again, I feel like these fit a little bit small so you can go like half a size up from your true to size or one full size up. They are pretty snug in the toe box to begin with but I've worn them for a while now so they have loosened up so they feel fine because I got this in the 6.5 and they feel good. Out of all the Yeezys, I find that these ones have the most, I guess, firm soles. They're not as soft and spongy and bouncy as the other ones. Having said that though, they're pretty comfortable and I wear them quite a bit too. With the suede though, I'm just afraid they might get dirty. But I love the colorway and again, this is another chunky shoe so it's really up to you if you like that silhouette. The retail on these were... $380. <laughs> so while we're talking about Yeezys, I have two pairs of the power phases I'm going to be talking about. I've got the grey one here as well as the black. Now I got them in different sizes. One of them I got in six and a half and one is in six. I find that when I went through the size, it was slightly too small. So I definitely recommend going half a size up if you're after some power phases. So this is the grey colorway. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the power phases. The leather is very soft and somehow when you wear them. I'm not too sure it's because this is a little bit too small for me but I can see like the silhouette of my toe like when I wear these shoes and it's not cute. So because I feel like they were slightly too snug when the black ones came out I got them in a size six and a half. Ta-da! And I've actually Never worn this out of my house. So this is pretty much dead stock. It's totally brand new. There's a lot of like creasing and like wrinkling around the toe box area on the leather. It's because the leather is very soft and I don't know, maybe the construction something. So I'm not a huge fan of the power faces. This is the last pair of my Yeezy collection and it is a pair of boots from season three. I haven't worn this in a long ass time. So I dug it up today. I got this in a size 38, which is my women's size true to size. And I saw the price tag on this and god damn it it was $820 I feel like sometimes when I buy these shoes I just black out in the store and the next minute I'm like oh I have these shoes but like fuck me $820 for these like that's really expensive I have no idea why I don't remember paying that much for them <sighs> anyway there are these boots over here and I've worn them a few times they are pretty cute and these ones you can go true to size. They're in this like sand colorway. I'm pretty sure they came in two other colorways like a black and an orange. So they do have like a wedge inside so you get a little bit of height when you wear these. They are nice so I might pull this out and wear them a bit more and they just come with these season 3 dust bags. Guys, I don't know if I'm the only person but I'm losing tracks of all the season. Like when people ask me about the clothing and stuff and which season it's from, like it's all blended into one and I don't even know. I'm wearing this Kylabaster sweatshirt as well and I can't even remember when I got this. Like I black out a lot when I go shopping. <laughs> Alright, now that we are done with all the Yeezy stuff, let's move on to some Adidas because that is like another bulk of my sneaker collection. When I jumped onto this Yeezy wave, I suddenly became like Team Adidas and at that time Adidas was going strong. The Ultra Boost was super hyped as well, so I have a few pairs to show you guys. So I have three pairs of Ultra Boost, actually no, I have four. I also have an Uncaged one which I'll show you guys shortly. But my very first pair is this J&D Triple White Ultra Boost. I really like the detailing on this, I think it's really 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 sleek looking and again ultra boost you can't go wrong they're super comfortable i went with a size us 7 and i think they fit pretty well and i'm so careful and then one day i was like buying juice or something 
and somebody stepped on my shoe! <laughs> Ah, uh, not gonna lie, I was pretty unhappy about that, but I don't think you can see it anymore. I tried my best to clean it, and then the other two I got, I'm not sure which versions they are because they came out so many. Potentially, I could be wrong. These, I think, are the 2.0s, and these are pretty beat up because these are my everyday gym shoes. If you guys saw, like, one of my vlogs, then you guys already know there's, like, holes in this, and I feel like it's time I got rid of this pair of shoes and start wearing other shoes to the gym. I don't know. What's wrong with me? I'm like a hoarder! These ones here, I don't really know why I got them. I think at that time I had a voucher that I had to spend at Adidas and I couldn't find anything that I really wanted so I was like, ah, oh, I might as well just pick them up because I can wear these to the gym. They're pretty similar to the other pair but I just don't really like the gradient grey detailing. I wish it was just all black. I think that would look a lot better but in terms of the fit and comfort, they are all the same to me. So speaking of uncaged ultra boots, I have a pair over here and they are a men's US 7. I don't know whether they have yellowed over time. I don't remember this detailing being that obvious. I think I probably worn these once and then I cleaned them because as you guys can see, the soles on these look so clean. Before I got them, I really wanted them and then once I bought them and tried them on feet, I don't really like the look of the uncaged ultra boots on myself personally because I have quite white feet. I feel like you can just see it protruding on the front and that's not cute. <sighs> Okay, this is like such an effort to get all my sneakers out, but now we're gonna talk about some miscellaneous Adidas shoes that I have. I'm sorry it's looking a little bit messy right now because I literally just piled everything here so I can show you guys. So first up, we actually have this Pharrell Williams Adidas Super Color Collection. Do you guys remember these? I think they came out with 50 different colorway of the superstars and I was really into them. I don't know why when they first came out. The retail on this is $129.99. And I actually got them in two colorways. This one over here is like the yellow one. I saw a photo of Pharrell wearing them and I like yellow so I was like, I need it! So I got these and then also I have the red pair. I can't believe I still held on to these guys. I actually wore them a lot when I first got them and I was really into them. If you've been following me on Instagram for a long time, you would have seen my photos wearing them and I have a story about these ones actually. So with the yellow ones, when they released these sneakers, Adidas Australia ran a competition for them. They ran a Instagram competition for these. They said if you post a photo, they will pick five winners. If you get chosen, you can pick any five colorways that you want. At that time, I was like, oh yeah, sure, I'll just try and enter it anyway. So when I got these yellow pairs, okay, this was like effort A plus one, all right? So <laughs> because I was really into like, my name is Montio Banana and I love bananas and yellow is one of my favorite colors. So I had this vision of this photo that I wanted to take that had bananas in the photo. I made my brother take this photo for me. So we went to Victoria Market to buy like a whole box of bananas. I think it was like 13 kilos of bananas. So I went to this spot, put all the bananas on the ground and took this photo. And this photo actually won the competition. So they picked five people and I was one of them. And they emailed me saying I could pick any five colorways that I wanted. So I told them like, I can't remember what colorways I chose at that time. And then like a few weeks later, they were like, oh, we're so sorry but we couldn't source the sneakers that you wanted because the sizes are sold out. Here's a $700 Adidas voucher which was even better than getting five pairs of shoes because imagine if I still had five pairs of those like I have no idea what I've done with them. Yeah, that was probably the only time I wore them though. So, uh. so while we're talking about the Pharrell Williams stuff, I also have this pair of human races. My boyfriend actually got these from me from StockX. There's something wrong with me guys. Like I haven't even worn these. I think these are a little bit small for me, these are US 6 and I find that the human races fit a little bit small but they are the black colorway. This one's over here. I think they released earlier this year and again, completely DS. There are a few more pairs that Adidas going to talk about. These are pretty general release stuff. So I have a pair of Stan Smiths. I know they're a pretty classic pair of shoes, but I have, I guess, so many other sneakers. So I don't wear these as much, but they're pretty cute. They have like the pink suede detailing at the back. And I got this in a men's US 6 and I think they fit pretty well. But man, this box, this box is like so beat up. <laughs> so let's see what is this one. So this one is a pure boost. I can't remember what year this released in, probably like a year or two ago. They are the Sneaker Boy and Wish collab. This was when Adidas did the sneaker exchange and all year they were like just releasing collaboration one after another. And this was one of them. These actually glow in the dark. 
So that's a really cool feature about them. Actually, let me show you. All right, I'm gonna show you guys. So I'm charging it up with this black light. Like again, why do I even own this? And then you should be able to see that it glows in the dark. So that's a pretty cool detail. The whole sneaker essentially glows in the dark. Can you see that? Cool, huh? Where am I going with these shoes? And who's gonna look at my glow in the dark shoes? I don't know. Those are my glow in the dark shoes. I'm gonna see what's over here. I've got two pairs of NMDs. And how many of you guys were into NMDs when they first released? When the NMDs first came out, like they were a thing, okay? And I was a little bit late to that wave. I think I only really wanted a pair when they did a second or third release and I was like, okay, maybe I want a pair of NMDs but I didn't get the prime knit ones and then when these came out for some reason, I really wanted them because of the colorway. These ones over here are just the mesh ones so they are pretty general release but at that time, they just sold out straight away. So I've got this pink blush colorway which I think is really cute. I got this in a women's US 7 and they fit fine. I am over the NMDs like Adidas. Just stop it! Stop coming out with so many pairs of NMDs. And then these ones over here are kind of like a chalk off-white colorway. To me, the NMD hype just like died really quick because Adidas killed it. Like they just came out with so many colorways so quickly. And I don't know, I just, I was just not about that NMD life. So I got those two pairs and those are the only two pairs that I own. And then I think this is the last pair of Adidas that I have to show you guys. And I totally forgot that I even have <sighs> this pair of sneakers, like I don't know what's wrong with me. If you recognize the print on this, then you will know that these are the Dame for Fakes. So I think they released this, was this last year? It's all like a blur, like the timeline of things coming out and like the prices. I'm pretty sure this was $200 retail. I just cannot see myself wearing this pair of sneakers. I actually bought them to do a review and then by the time I got them, I don't know whether I got too busy or something and then I just completely forgot about them. And then they just got like chucked into a corner of my house and never to be seen again until today. So this is completely DS. It's a little bit of a out there style. I am like on the fence about these pair, like they're nice but Eh. I can't believe I almost forgot to talk about this pair of shoes. This is actually the most recent addition to my collection and if you guys have not seen that video, I'll link it below as well and it is the Daniel Asham Futurecraft 40s and there are these ones over here. This is by far my favorite sneaker of the moment. I guess it's because it's such a new thing and comfort wise they're great. They kind of feel like a pair of ultra boost but only lighter. Huge fan of the Futurecraft. I feel like I've been talking for a really long time but I still got a couple more sneakers to go. If you guys are still watching to this part, thank you so much. So we're gonna move on to some Y3 sneakers now. If you guys didn't know, Y3 is under Adidas and it's designed by Yoji Yamamoto. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm showing you guys this pair of shoes, but this pair of sneakers is so old and it is falling apart and I've never ever wear these anymore, but they are the Retro Boost. And when they first came out, I was like all over this. I don't know why. Something about the silhouette, the pull tab at the back and the bruise so like I was really really into these and I wore them quite a lot because you can see the soles are totally beat up and over this side like it's just falling apart super yellow on this section over here like the glue is just coming apart so this section is just separating from I don't know the only thing about the Y3 sneakers though because they're made of neoprene which is like kind of like a scuba diving material I feel like my feet gets a little bit sweaty when I wear these <laughs> and then my next pair of Y3s is actually this Sand Zips. I actually wore this quite a bit and again, I think with the material, I don't know why. It's just not very breathable. It's not my favorite, but you can actually unzip this lace detailing and then below, uh, it just says Yoji Yamamoto and I did not realize how dirty this looks. The last pair of my Y3 sneakers are these Yoji Runs. The retail on these is 380 Australian dollars. They are completely brand new. They are very lightweight. They have the boost sole. A great pair of sneakers if you're looking for something like just to walk around with and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's just not talk about this pair of shoes because I don't even know why I own this. So let's move on. So we're at the final part of my sneaker collection, which is the Bougie collection. Let's just talk about Balenciaga first since they're over here. I got this pair of Triple S over here in a OG colorway. These are size 38 and they fit probably half a size big and they're really heavy. And if I'm gonna be real, I'm really, 
I'm really over the triple S wave. When they first came out, I did a video about them because I was so pumped for them. And the retail on these are pretty expensive. They are $1,240. At that time, I was really into them. But again, they've been around for like over a year now. And the wave, to me, has really died. I wear them occasionally, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit overdone. These ones, I wore them a lot. These are the Speed Runners. And I got this during the first release in March. March last year. It feels like such a long time ago, but it really isn't. So I've worn these heaps. I really love them. They're really lightweight, super comfy. And I wear these when I want to look slightly put together because a lot of my clothes just makes me look like I'm wearing pajamas, okay? Like I'm really about that comfy, cozy vibe. So I feel like these kind of makes my outfit look a little bit put together. So I like the speed trainers. I got them again in a size 38. Some people reckon they fit a little bit big. Make sure you go try a pair before you get them. The retail on this when I got them was $785, but I'm pretty sure they're 900 something now for the speed runner. So man, the prices on Balenciaga, like it just keeps going up and up. All right, let's move on. What I have in here is a pair of Fear of God boots. These were really expensive. Like this were 1,003. I, I don't know. I just remember these being really expensive, but this was the first time Fear of God made women sneakers and I was like all about it. Like I really wanted them so bad. And so when they released them, I just blacked out and copped a pair as well. I really like the silhouette and the colorway, but man, these hurt my ankle for some reason. There's this section over here and it just sticks into my ankle when I walk. So I don't know whether I got the wrong size or like I haven't worn them enough, but this hurt my feet. Okay. I was talking so much that my camera was dying. We got a couple more sneakers to go, so I will try and make it quick. I'll just pick these ones over here. They're a pair of Valentino open sneakers. They're a very classic silhouette for Valentino. I don't really have a lot of things to say about it. Got these in a the size 38. They're okay. They're okay. I have two pairs of Saint Laurent sneakers, and these ones are actually mint. They are like the bread colorways. I know the high tops were really popular two years ago. This Saint Laurent with their older sneakers the leather is so stiff on these that you have to wear them for like over a month for them to feel somewhat comfortable so I don't really recommend them but I find that their new sneakers the leather has gone a lot softer so that is good I reckon they look good on feet comfort wise not the best these ones they are the platform Saint Laurent women's sneakers these are in a size 37 if I'm not mistaken like these ones definitely run big they're okay platform a little bit stiff I've come to a point where I'm not really into wearing sneakers that are not comfortable like why did I spend money on a pair of shoes that's gonna hurt me? So I'm a little bit more careful now. Here I have a pair of golden goose sneakers. They already come distressed. They fit true to size. And if you didn't know, they come with a wedge insole. So if you're after a pair of sneakers that give you... Oh shit. They give you a little bit of height. The Golden Goose sneakers come with a wedge insole. They're pretty comfortable. The leather's not too stiff. I can't believe we're nearly to the end. So I got two more pairs of sneakers to show you guys. These ones over here I got this year. My boyfriend got them for me as a gift. And they are the Chanel sneakers. They're a size 38. So with these ones, they run pretty true to size. I've been wanting a pair of Chanel sneakers for so long. I think this is like the summer colorway. I could be wrong. I got them in... June or July this year. This one has a slight wedged insole inside so it gives you a little bit of a height. What I like about these is they're not overly chunky. The silhouette is kind of like a Air Max 1 almost like the upper kind of reminds me of that. I'm aware that all sneakers crease but for some reason I just feel like these crease more than like my other sneakers and also with the Chanel sneakers. If you have white feet like this is probably going to be a little bit uncomfortable so when I first got these, man, my feet hurt so bad. I wore this when I was in Japan. Walking around in Shibuya and this all day and at the end of the day, my feet hurt so bad that I literally like just wanted to take my shoes off. So I had to go and buy a pair of random slippers and I just ended up wearing those because this hurt my feet so 
bad but then <laughs> they're much better now because I've worn them in but I know not to wear them like all day in terms of the leather I, I don't know like I feel like it's creased so much and I don't know how long this pair of sneakers will last and they were they were pretty expensive okay <laughs> so the last pair of sneakers I'm gonna talk about just makes me question myself like why did I even buy this and why do I even own a pair of sneakers like this <sighs> but they are the Buscemi's over here and maybe at that time I thought they were cool I probably got these like two years ago and I thought like it was popping I was like trying to be all bougie and stuff and now when I look at these sneakers I just feel like a complete wanker like I feel like I don't even want to wear these out because it's just too much so I cop the black colorway they do have like the gold plated detailing so these are the 100mm clip Buscemi's this fit pretty true to size I got them in size 38 but can I just say that these shoes are the most freaking uncomfortable pair of sneakers that I own. They're even worse than the Saint Laurent's. Like for some reason, I don't know why, but these literally were so stiff that they bruised my ankles as I was wearing them. And I only wore them for a couple of hours and I was walking home that day and I was like, <gasps> I can't wait to take this off. And so ever since then, I was traumatized and I never wore them again because my ankles like on both sides of my legs were they were bruised from this pair of sneakers okay I don't know how much you have to wear these shoes to actually make them comfortable or if anyone even thinks they're comfortable because now every time when I see people wearing these sneakers I was like bro I feel you I think your feet must be like in pain right now oh my god I forgot to talk about god damn it hold on I thought I was done, but I was not done. Okay, just one more brand, guys. I have three pairs of Common Projects. If you're after a good pair of leather shoes, I would definitely recommend the Common Projects. So right here, I have the B-Balls in a blush nude colorway. These ones I got in a size 39 because they only ran them in men's sizing, so that's the smallest of the men. So this one over here with the platform, I got again in a size 38. Generally, in the Common Projects, I would recommend going a full size down because the length of the shoe, it just runs really long. Unless you have white feet you can stick true to size which is why all of them I got in a size 38 because I got white ass feet okay so when I go a size down I feel like it's way too snug and it hurts the front of my foot and I'm not about that uncomfortable shoe life lastly I have this black and white pair of Achilles lows similar to the other pair but this is a classic silhouette so the sole is not as thick that is my whole sneaker collection now I've been collecting these sneakers for two to three years now so as you guys saw some of them are really old and beat up and some of them are new and some of them I just need to think about my life a little bit better because I've never even worn them so I don't know what is wrong with me okay but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want to see part one of my sneaker collection I'll link it in the description bar below I talk about all my Nike collection Vans and mostly like sportswear brands so you guys can go check it out and yeah make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I upload every Wednesdays and Sundays so you guys don't want to miss out and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you guys on Wednesday bye